Welcome back to Black Swan Outdoors, and today we got another travel tip video. I'm just going to go through a couple items uh, that you may want to consider carrying, or some things that uh, have multiple uses uh, while you're traveling. Uh, so the first thing, and probably one of my most used items when I'm traveling, um, and this is domestically or internationally, is this uh, piece of webbing and a carabiner. Uh, this is a very, very handy multiple use tool that you can use for lots of different stuff. Um, the carabiner um, can be used for um, in conjunction or with the with the webbing, of course, but it can also be a multiple use tool. I did a blog post a while ago about multiple use items and highlighted the carabiner as one of those neat things. Um, so you can use it to attach water bottles or keys or things like that to your pack. And this is what uh, I used to do a lot of backpacking. And when I did, I'd almost always carried a uh, carabiner for that reason. But in particular in bear country, because if you wanted, if you need to hoist uh, food up into a tree, you can use this carabiner as kind of a, a makeshift pulley as well. Uh, the nice thing about um, Ask Any Rock Climber, uh, uh, the nice thing about carabiners too, is that you can use them as bottle openers. So you can open up a bottle of beer. Um, in a pinch, they can be used, uh, I guess, as uh, for defensive purposes, um, say, while you're, while, while you're traveling, uh, which would be a better, certainly a better option than sticking your keys in between your fingers. Um, this is a little faster, a little more accessible. Um, never had any trouble. Uh, you know, traveling with this, um, you know, with, on, on planes and security and, and whatnot. Um, but the webbing here, uh, when used together, um, the thing that I use this perhaps the most for is um, if I want to sleep or take a nap or, or zone out, watch a movie in a lounge, um, what I always do is I attach this piece of webbing to my foot or arm or my body at some points, but generally my foot, uh, and then snap the carabiner on, on the pack and it's locked. And if someone wanted to grab my pack, um, they would be grabbing this leash the, essentially, and I would be woken up. Um, so certainly any item that's of value, you could, you could leash yourself to with that. And that's probably the most thing to be, um, uh, that I do with, with the webbing. The webbing also serves as some other purposes as well. Uh, if you need to create a safe space, um, say in an active shooter situation, or you get a hotel room that really sucks, all of those industrial doors have a closing arm at the very top of the door. And you can take this webbing, you can wrap it around that closing arm and ef effectively lock the door. Uh, so you can create a, um, a, a, uh, a lock for your door, even if the door itself has um, got subpar locking. Uh, in that active shooter scenario too, a piece of webbing um, could be particularly helpful for dragging somebody uh, as well. Um, and then um, from kind of a more of the escape and evasion end of it, uh, if you need to get out of a hotel room, say, or uh, second or third story, um, uh, you, you, uh, hotel room, um, then what you can use is this as an anchor and then use your carabiner, uh, to attach, um, yourself to a makeshift harness. And I did a video on how to make a harness with, uh, with webbing. So with rope, um, rope gets pretty unmanageable and pretty heavy, uh, very quickly. And you can manage webbing uh, much, much easier. Um, so for making like an anchor, for example, um, you can do that with uh, easily with uh, your, your webbing. You can carry uh, an item, an anchoring item with you, and we can do a whole video on that if you're interested. Put a comments below if you're interested in how to do, how to make a escape out of a window. Um, cause I'd be happy to do that video if people are interested in it. Um, kind of what, what kind of gear to have and the and safety precautions. Uh, I can walk through all that in a very, uh, um, low budget, um, escape video. Um, so I don't necessarily carry long piece of webbing. If I thought that I might need to do something for that reason, which I generally won't, wouldn't, 
um, then I certainly could carry this for that reason. Um, these also make great litters too. Uh, so if you're responding to an emergency of some kind where you need to move a body, um, again, this is something out in the, um, when I used to guide, uh, you would carry with you and then you could make a makeshift litter and with a team, take people out of a wooded area. So uh, very, very uh, functional, very lightweight, and you're not wasting money on um, some of those tarp litters that are cheap and rip, uh, more or less a one-time use. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice to use these, there, but there are videos out there, just uh, Google um, wilderness first aid uh, litter uh, webbing or whatever, and, and I'm sure it'll come up, but any good first aid book, wilderness first aid book will ex explain how to make a litter. Uh, so, um, lots and lots of uses uh, for the webbing as well. If you needed to make a makeshift seat belt of some kind, uh, a strap breaks, um, you need a belt uh, very quickly uh, because you lost, uh, like say your clothing um, or you just need another belt. Um, you want to strap luggage together. I've done that before with this. Um, strap something to a backpack, strap something to a wheeling suitcase. Um, that's super helpful. So many, many different uses for a little piece of webbing. This is, I think, maybe 15 or 12 feet long, I want to say. Uh, well, let's find out. So it's daisy chained. Um, so all you have to do is just pull this out. And, uh, and then it's doubled over. And so let's see. It's Oh, so it's about 20, 20, 23 feet long is what it is. Um, and uh, all right, so the next up, super helpful, is cordage. Um, this is something certainly you see a lot of YouTube videos out there on paracord and all the different uses for it. So I don't really feel like we need to get into all the nitty gritty and detail. Um, however, I do, I will say a couple things. One is, you see a lot of people with these with their paracord and their bug out bags or their go bags or whatever and first off they carry way too much there's no way you would use all of the cordage that they're carrying and second they're carrying so many that they need to carry some kind of like spool or organizing tool um and if not it just becomes a mess so instead of doing that you just have 10 uh 10 foot sections of paracord um each you know, multiple sec, you know, multiple sections. And if you need a, a long line, um, then you can just tie these together. You're not going to need ever, almost ever, a very long line. When traveling, what I do is I use, um, I tie these together if I'm going to do a makeshift clothing line. If I'm washing my clothes in the hotel room, I can use this as a, a, a drying line. Um, that's the main usage for it. Um, it's not very sexy. Again, just like with a with a leash, it's, there's all these kind of fun things you can do with this stuff or for emergencies. But then there's these kind of more practical ends of it. So, um, but yes, yeah, there's a lot of uses for paracord. Uh, again, um, the other kind of main usage too is that uh, you can use this to make again an anchor, if need be. Uh, you can use this as a prussic to slow or repel down. Uh, again, that would be in the video I'll show you, but you can just make kind of a um, kind of a stopgap measure. And I'd be happy to do a video on that, how to tie the seat harness, um, build an anchor, and repel out of a window uh, safely if anyone is interested in that. Uh, so we can talk about anchor options, where to anchor, how to go through a wall, uh, what kind of tools you might need. Because if, if you thought you needed to do something like that, you would want to carry a, a really stout survival knife or a hatchet or a crowbar or something like that because you'll need some tools um, as the anchoring device or to create a place to anchor. So, But that's a whole nother video. Um, so cordage has lots of usage. Um, I always recommend, you know, you don't need as much because no one ever needs as much like a 100-foot spool. And a 100-foot spool is, you know, bulky, heavy, not, you're never going to use all that, that cordage. Um, I always just recommend just doing 10 foot lengths of, of cordage and then uh, tying them up in chunks so you'll always know 
how long it's going to be. You can always tie cordage together to make it longer um, if need be. And probably for travel, the thing I use cordage the absolute most for is washing my clothes. So if I'm washing my clothes and I need to make a, a um, make a, a, a clothesline, that's what I'd use a longer piece of cordage for. Otherwise, um, you know, cordage uh, could be used to make shift, do all sorts of other things as well. And you've probably seen a lot of videos already on it, so I won't go in too much in depth. So I was talking about washing clothes. This is a great item. Again, it's another thing they used to do and bring with me on the trail that I had taken over into travel. Uh, this is just a sill. Uh, waterproof stuff sack and you can fill this up with water soapy water and wash your clothes in it uh, You could put your wet wet swimwear in there You could put dirty boots in there to keep everything else clean and dry in your bag um, You can blow this up and and seal it uh, up and then and sleep on it like a, make a makeshift pillow um, If you needed extra items, maybe you'd, you you bought some souvenirs on your trip and you needed some extra room in your pack you could put uh, these items on here and lash this onto the back of your pack. Um, if you, uh, yeah, if you need a day pack, you can make a, a, a makeshift day pack with your know, webbing and, and cordage. Um, if you wanted to keep items in your pack dry, um, maybe you're carrying a tablet or a GPS device or a uh, cell phone or other things, and it's uh, a crazy rainy area that you're going, and you need to keep, or you think you might potentially, um, I don't know, fall in the water or something. Many, many uses is what I'm getting to, and it's super light and um, doesn't take up much room and can be used many for many things. So, uh, well worth the, 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 the investment in uh, a sill um, nylon stuff sack. All right, so next up is the, uh, it's just a simple um, chem light. Uh, you can use this for signaling. You can use this, break this to, and, and look inside your pack. Um, you could use it as a candle. Many, oh, again, so many uses for chem lights. Um, you know, marking places where you've been, you know, um, identifying people, things, whatever. Um, the problem with chem lights is they'll last for 12 hours and it, um, you know, it's hard to shut it off. So I bring this, a little cigar tube. Um, and inside the cigar tube, I find it to be the perfect uh, tool or, to, or device to carry this tool, which is um, just a traveler's pick. Most people who hang doors in an industrial situation um, don't really know um, how locks work. And you can take advantage of that. Um, a small screwdriver is fine too, but the traveler pick just seems to be a lot quicker and faster. You can check out my uh, buddy Deviant Olam, and he does a lot of great videos um, on lock picking. And um, the traveler hook is a is a particularly uh, handy tool to have. And you can get through a lot of doors without having to carry a lock pick set or be a master lock picker. Um, certainly, just with this tool. But with the uh, cigar tube, I can just take my glow stick and I can put it inside here. And now it's no longer glowing. And if I need the light, I can just pull it out. The other nice thing about the cigar tube is if you carry a small nail with you, if you need this for some reason, um, you can puncture the top with the nail, screw that in, uh, and the light stick holds the nail in place. And then you have a defensive tool that you could use as a, a striking weapon or, or, or something. So um, makeshift, you know, defensive device uh, just from this cigar tube. Uh, it's waterproof, so little items you can put in there. I think I did some videos about uh, um, escape and evasion kits. I have a whole lock pick set in a cigar tube that I carry with me that um, that you can you can make in the field. Um, and uh, so I can do a video on that if you're interested. Uh, but uh, this is, yeah, another kind of multiple use item uh, that people might not think of carrying that has lots of lots of fun uses, neat uses for. Um, okay, so then next up is this little bundle. Um, 
Oh, and, and by the way, I'll give credit. The striking tool is um, from uh, from Hunt of Deadly Skills, Clint Emerson. Uh, he talks about making that in his book, the striking tool with a, a escape and evasion kit, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's where I had gotten that idea. I've personally never used it in the field, never done that. Um, he had kit stuff in there, but I think personally the glow stick works a little better in terms of it's more sturdy. Um, I did a series on Instagram a few years ago. We did tried to do as many of the 100 deadly skills as I could. Um, and so I built that and tested it out on a dummy. Um, and it worked out quite well, actually, striking. So, um, okay. So this little bundle of shit here has a lot of other multiple use items. Since we're talking about getting through doors, I'll start with this item. This is the probably alongside duct tape and maybe a, um, uh, a pair of channel locks, uh, you can fix so many things. You know, a, a tailpipe uh, from a muffler or two, oh, I don't know, just uh, anytime you need wire, sturdy wire, a, clo a just a, a coat hanger serves so many purposes. Um, I, I, again, I can't even list all of them, but it's a, a cheap, handy, lightweight thing to carry. The nice thing about it, and where this gets into into doors, is you can extend this out, and uh, you can use this as an, what's called an under the door tool uh, with your cordage. And I'll put a video of myself doing that. I think I have a video on there. If I do, I'll put it on here, um, where you just slide this under the door, and then it hook with the rope. It hooks the latch and opens the door. So if you lose your key at the hotel and you can't get in. So if you're ever wondering in those movies how spies, uh, the assassin gets into the hotel room, uh, path, you know, uh, this this can be one method to do that. You can very quickly uh, ma make this run in under the door, uh, unlatch the door and get in very, very fast uh, with some skill. Doing it with a coat hanger is a lot more difficult than a commercial built kit though, I will say. So you really have to practice that and it's very hard at first, but once you get it, you get it. So, um, but the coat hanger does work for, uh, particularly for bad, um, bad doors. All right. So next up is another thing. This is this little trick, um, is something I've never done in the field, but I got this from Ed, uh, Calderon from Ed's manifesto and it's carrying a roll of caution tape. And if you needed to create a place, and I just have this duct taped, so I won't open it. Um, but if you needed to create a place where you needed, um, you know, people not to come through, you need to warn people uh, not to go through that uh, particular doorway or an area. Uh, maybe you wanted to create a, a, a place for you, a private place. Uh, maybe you want to find a place to nap in the city and you can't find it, you can go to, a, you know, find a, a janitor's closet or a bathroom or somewhere, put this over the doorway, close the door, and people will, won't think twice about uh, what, going through the area. So just another kind of social engineering trick um, that you can, you can uh, take. Or if you wanted to funnel people into a particular area for a specific reason, um, again, you can, you can use this for that. Uh, you could use it for signaling. It's plastic, it's bright as well. So, okay. Next up in that little bundle here is the Sharpie. Sharpies are super, um, helpful to have, especially if you need to mark something in like a tourniquet or write a note to somebody. I just threw some duct tape on here and then I put some cellophane tape. And the reason why I put cellophane tape in here is this acts as a trap for, um, you know, if you, if you had a rental car and you were concerned that someone was going to break into your rental car or tampering with your things, um, you can put this on a door, your hotel door or bathroom door. And if the tape is broken, you know, someone had gone through, uh, that, that door. And I did a whole, like I said, I did a whole video on, on that. And I, I can do more videos on setting traps and stuff in hotel rooms. Um, but Cellophane tape works really well for that. It works for other other things as well. Um, other neat kind of trick tips and tricks will I'll save for other for future videos. 
Uh, zip ties alongside a coat hanger and duct tape. Zip ties are also one of those really cool multiple use things that just are just so endless. The, uh, the list is so endless. So I threw in some of the bigger, beefier ones. Um, if you needed to, for some reason, detain somebody, um, you could certainly do that with zip ties. And in fact, one of the zip ties already pre-zipped uh, just for that reason. So if you needed to throw, um, to, to detain somebody, someone got violent on a plane or on a bus, um, and you needed to create um, a safe environment, um, you can easily detain somebody. Obviously, that would be breaking some laws, and I'm not saying to break laws, I'm just saying that is something that it could be useful for, but there's many, many things you can use uh, zip ties for again. Uh, so well worth the wait, I think, in carrying um, one or two. And then uh, lastly, is uh, this hook. Um, this is um, also another multiple purpose tool. Uh, my main function for this tool is a, is just to hang my backpack. If I needed to hang my backpack um, in a bathroom stall or, or somewhere off a, a, a chair or a table, uh, I want to create a, um, the ability to do that. Or if I needed a hook to fish something out, um, I can I can use this. It's just a coat hanger and duct tape. Now, the actual construction and design, and the reason why there's duct tape here is it's actually a makeshift holster. So obviously, if you're needing a weapon in a particular area where you're not allowed to have a weapon, uh, first off, you're not going to want to travel with a holster because first off, that is a flag. People are going to wonder why you're traveling with a holster, and not a gun. Second, uh, you don't know what kind of gun you might be able to acquire when you get into wherever you need to go. So that make and model is going to be, uh, might not be um, known. Um, and, and lastly, you might not want to spend the money on a, on a holster for a gun that you might only be using for a short amount of time. But that holster is going to have to be a concealed carry holster. Uh, so... I'll do a, a video or picture of what that this looks like, but essentially the barrel of the gun can go right in here, and then this uh, hook here is for your pants, your belt line, um, and then you can carry a weapon without it falling in your pants. Now keep in mind, um, it's going to be better for a weapon that has a safety on it because there's no trigger guard. Um, so a revolver or, um, or, or a gun with a, with a, a safety device, um, or carrying it, certainly carrying it without a round in the pipe. Um, so this just is a makeshift holster. Um, you don't need to have the hook. Um, you know, you, with your, you already have the duct tape and the coat hanger, so you can make that in the field as needed. Um, but I had found that it was nice having a travel hook uh, just to hang my pack and my shirt or jacket or whatever um, in those times. So I threw it in. So um, so I'll often I often carry this even though I'm uh, not an assassin. Um, all right. Uh, so those are some travel items. Uh, if you've got some cool multiple use items that you carry with you that you'd like to share, please. Uh, put that in the comments below or send a link to a video. Uh, that would be helpful for other people. Um, and if you want to see an escape and evasion video on how to build a kit and um, escape out of a window safely, um, I could do a video on that if you're interested. So let me know and uh, and we can, we can do that. Um, and uh, hopefully you found this video in interesting and entertaining. And remember to like and subscribe.